السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير اللهم لا سهلا إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما آمين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله بعد grace of Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, we are together to understand the the basic need to understand the book of Allah that is Arabic grammar uh, we know the importance of grammar until we we understand the basics of grammar of any language we cannot understand that language and to understand Arabic definitely it's important to understand the basics of uh, Arabic grammar and that's why we are here and let's refresh our intentions why we are starting this class because it's our responsibility to understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the message for us for our guidance so uh, let's start inshallah with the with the intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah accept it from us may Allah uh, uh, record this time whatever we spent for this class in the high rewards inshallah uh, so let's start, uh, my dear. Uh, as you know, in to to understand a sentence of any uh, language, we need to understand the status of words in that. Uh, different words make a sentence. Okay, so uh, we need to understand what kind of words Arabic language has. So it has basically three kinds of words, as you can see here. <clears throat> Whenever you will see a sentence, it will have three kinds of word total. Uh, number one, ism, right? I-S-M, ism. I have used a, English. It is English so that uh, whenever you read it in Arabic also, and I'll share a book in the group for the, for the theoretical reading. You people can go through that, whatever I'm teaching through these slides. Uh, the theories you can read from the book and then inshallah we can discuss later and there they are the the terms are written in arabic also okay so uh, mostly we'll use the arabic terms which we should know as it is so ism uh, in english it is noun okay and it is a name of anything uh any place any idea i'll just uh, define this little bit in more detail uh, then we have fi'l. Fi'l, uh, you can see it's related to time, okay, that uh, uh, something happening in time, and then, uh, and it has a tense. And then third, we have harf. Harf, that gives us incomplete meaning. So uh, let's learn the definitions of these three words these three uh, types uh, in a little more detail. So number one, as I said, ism. Ism is a name, is the name of, right? Okay, in, in, for example, as we are just conducting the class in English and you people must know, must uh, know the, uh, the basic grammar of English. So we, I'll relate it to that, okay? Uh, in English, we have seven or eight parts of uh, speech, but in Arabic, we said only three because ism is a bigger category in Arabic language. So ism is the noun of a person, of a place, of anything, of an idea, of an object. Like an object is also ism in English. In English, in Arabic. In English, it's a different part of speech 
but here it is a part of ism, right? Uh, adjective is a describing noun, right? Uh, any word that describes a noun, right? For example, uh, the big tree. So big is an adjective and in Arabic, this also comes under ism. Similarly, adverbs that describe a verb, for example, reads carefully, runs slowly or fast, right? So this slowly, carefully, fast, these are also uh, ism in Arabic. All those words which tell us how uh, an action is taking place, right? All those words are also ism. All those words which tell us something about noun, its attributes, they are also ism in Arabic. Any idea is also in Arabic, ism in Arabic. Normally, uh, uh, when we describe a noun in English, we call it the name of a person, place, and thing, right? These three only we stop. In English, the noun's definition include only these three. But in Arabic grammar, these three plus any idea, any thought, uh, how you describe it, uh, any adjective, any adverb, and much more also comes under ism, right? So ism, and it is said that almost 80% of the words in Arabic are under this category, ism. So it's a big category, right? So subhanAllah, we'll start uh, with ism in detail. And by knowing ism properly, it, it means that you have understood 80% of the words. Then 5% are huruf, harf, right? And then 15% you can say are uh, fair, right? So that's why this is the, the great big category is. So inshallah, we'll focus first of all on this. And it's very easy. Second category, first is ism. Second category, as I said, is fair. A word that has a tense, yani past tense or present or future, okay? So, for example, past we know in English means he ate. Uh, present, he eats. And future, he will eat, okay? So here the second form is used. Second form of verb is used. Here, first form is used with S for he. And here will is used, helping verb to make us uh, understand that this is in future. This will happen in future, okay? So alternative definition, let's see. A word that is not an ism and is not a herf is a fail. As I said, that uh, yeah, if there are total three categories only, right? So we will, if we understand ism properly and huruf are also very easy, so then the other words in Arabic sentence in an Arabic sentence are all fair. Okay. I hope you understood this concept also. Then herf number three herf. Now herf, a word that needs another word with it in order to make sense. Okay, it, it, yani fail itself is a is it gives sense. You you understand what it means. Eight means uh, or will eat. Okay, but herf. Okay, and one clarification in Urdu, herf or huruf are alphabets. A B C D. They are the alphabets. Uh, and in Urdu, if we say alif ba ta sa, like alif be te se. In Urdu, it's be te se, but in Arabic, it is ba ta sa. So these are not huruf in Arabic grammar. In the language of grammar, in grammatical terminology, herf is not an alphabet. Herf either is um, a preposition or a conjunction, right? But it's not a letter only. Inshallah, when we'll go in detail, you will understand it. Okay, what are huruf? For example, fi, ala, min, right? These type of... Uh, uh, words are herf uh, grammatically, okay? So alternative definition, you can understand a word that is not an ism and not a fail is a herf, okay? Now, as I said, that we'll start with um, the detail of ism, 
Okay, so inshallah, we'll talk more on ESM today and um, we'll see how much we can cover and then we'll have little practice to recognize ism from Quran, inshallah, from the Holy Quran. So every ism has four properties. Let's see what is ism. Ism is a noun of, uh, is a name of uh, anything, person, place, idea, adjectives, adverbs, right? Uh, all these are ism, yani nouns in Arabic. So every ism has four properties, okay? Number one, status. Number two, number. Number three, gender. Number four, type. Uh, if you wrote, if you go through different books, this word would be different. I mean, maybe they say, instead of type, they may say range, they may say capacity, they, they, they may use different words, but for these three are exactly same words used in all the books you will find. Uh, <clears throat> now one by one we'll go uh, to these. Uh, so <clears throat> four properties of an S. Uh, let's try to understand these one by one. And don't forget to note down your doubts or your questions, okay? So after going through this, you will be able to tell the four properties of an ism, right? Uh, such as tawilat, nas, and akla, mundaran, darani. So what are these uh, categories? You will tell me later, inshallah. You'll be able to recognize them. These are different nouns, but you will be able to tell me what is... Uh, all these four categories in this ism, okay? For example, what is the gender of this ism? What is the number? What is the uh, status? What is the type of this ism? Inshallah, you will be able to tell me later. So these four uh, properties of an ism, right? Number one, as I said, is status, extremely important. This property is extremely important uh, why extremely important? Because this is unique to Arabic language. The other properties, for example, gender. Yes, we have gender in all other languages. In Urdu also, we say mudakkar In uh, English also, feminine, you can see, see, feminine and masculine, right? These are two genders. Uh, number. Uh, number we have a singular and plural right but uh, one thing is different here this there is a pair also pair or dual in Arabic it is called tathniya right so we have uh, uh, different words for one thing we have different word for two things we have different words for three plus things so we are in number we have singular dual or pair Oh, and third is plural. So three type of numbers we have in Arabic grammar, okay? Uh, a type also, see a type, as I said, is it some, some books will say it's a type of uh, a word. Okay, is it proper noun or is it it's a proper uh, or common noun, right? So type means either nakira. Uh, nakira, uh, in Urdu also we use the same words. Isme nakira and isme ma'rifa, right? So nakira means common. And ma'rifa means proper noun. So this is also common. In English also, you understand what does it mean, common and proper. Uh, so these three things, gender, type, and number are common with all languages. Now, this status is unique to Arabic. And um, you must have heard that it is very important to read Fatha Kasra Bamma. And uh, these are Arabic terminologies for the movements of uh, Arabic uh, words. In Urdu, we call it Zabar Zair Pesh, right? But in English, in Arabic, we, saw this, we say Fatha Kasra Vamma. These uh, movements define the status of a word, of an ism, basically. That's why it's extremely important to read them because we may change the status of a word by changing these movements, fatha kasra vamma, right? So there are three, as there are two genders, feminine and masculine, there are three numbers, singular, pair, plural, or singular, dual, plural. There are two types of uh, noun, uh, proper and common, and there are three types of status, 
right? Now, in comes uh, when we come to the status, there are three types of status, okay? What are those? Uh, number one, rafa, right? Number one, a status is rafa. Number two is jar. Number three is nasub or raf nasab jar. Okay. Uh, the four properties of, uh, of an ism are like the four wheels of a car. Every ism has a property. Uh, of every ism has these four properties, right? Uh, and now uh, we'll go one by one to these properties. Uh, you can please write in the chat as for for now is it going fine are you comfortable understanding this if you have any question you can either raise your hand or you can write in the chat because if something is confusing here uh, we can't move next to you okay great yes understanding yes perfect okay okay great so we'll move next, inshallah. So as I said, status is extremely important and it is unique to Arabic language, right? Now let's start with this. So status of an ism. As I said, there are three forms of status. There are three types of status. Uh, one is raf, right? Rafa. See how it is written in Arabic? Rafa. Uh, it's a doer status. It's a status of a doer. Yani, who is doing or right? Who is acting? And maybe like if it is a, a non-living things, then what did that or who or what did any action? That noun, that name, which is doing something. So the doer of any action is, uh, is the status of Rafa. For example, I just give you the example. I am teaching you, right? Right now, I am teaching you. I is, uh, the status is Rafa because I is doer here, right? I am teaching you. So I, the word I is a doer here. So that will be the status of uh, uh, I will be Rafa because doer is I in this sentence, okay? Then uh, the details about that uh, action, for example, why this action is happening, how this action is happening, what is this action, uh, where this action is happening, when this action is happening, all these details, okay? the, the, the words which tell us all these details about the action will be in the status of nasb. Okay, so Rafa will be uh, uh, shown with R in the next slides or in the next communication. N will be presenting Nasb. Okay, and uh, this will be the details how, when, where, what happened. Okay, so, so that action on what that action is happening, how that action is happening. Okay, for example, um, I am playing football. So I is doer playing, right? What is happening? Okay, what? Playing is happening. Well, okay, and that's a verb, but how, uh, where, in the morning, in the ground, okay? And football is being played. Playing is an action, right? Playing is an action, but what is being played? Football. And as I said, I am teaching you Arabic. I is doer, will be in halat -e rafa status of rafa. A teaching is a verb that is a tense, right? It's a separate thing. And Arabic is what is being taught, right? What, see, like uh, uh, what Arabic is being taught. Where through Zoom, when, uh, in the evening, okay, how, how, uh, in a in, in English medium and through Zoom, why to understand uh, Quran? All these details, if we put in a sentence, all these words in Arabic will be in uh, nasib. The status will be nasib. Okay. 
uh, third word after of will be in the status of jar. Okay. For example, book of Maryam. So uh, the book, the word after of Maryam's book, the book of Maryam, right? So Maryam, the book of Maryam. Maryam will be in the status of jar. Just remember the word after of book of after of is Maryam. So the book of Maryam. Maryam will be in the status of jar. Okay. Now you can see here. So, so the status name is Rafa. Rafa is the status. And that noun, that word which is in the status of Rafa is called Marfur. Okay. Marfur. For example, uh, Ashmad, Ashmadu. Ahmadu yakra ul kitab. Ahmadu yakra ul kitab. Ahmad is reading a book, for example. So Ahmad is in halat raf, and Ahmad is marfu. The status of Ahmad is raf, but we will say Ahmad is marfu here. Marfu means in the status of raf. Similarly, um, um, for example, Ahmad yakra ul kitab. Kitab, kitaba, it will be kitaba, and kitab will be in the status of nasb, and it will be mansub. What is the status? If I ask what is the status of kitab, you will say nasb. The status is nasb. Uh, and what is kitab? Kitab is mansub. So the word which is in the status of nasb will be called mansub. Okay. Similarly, uh, the noun or the word because these are the status of ism. So the ism which is in the status of jar will be called majroor. Okay. So just remember these three status, the name, the the, the rough status is of doer. Uh, the details about that action will be nasb and uh, jar is showing uh, possession. For example, the, see the book of Maryam. So the, the book is of Maryam, right? So it shows a possession. It shows the possession of Maryam. That book belongs to Maryam. Okay. So this will be, Maryam will be in the status of Jar and Maryam will be Majroor. Uh, I hope it's uh, good so far. Please write in the chat. Is it good so far? Do you have any question? If it is good so far, then I can move next, inshallah. Okay, yes, alhamdulillah, one answer came. Okay. Another yes, okay, great. So we can move next, inshallah. Okay, now an important thing. That how will you recognize this? You understood that Raf is the doer. The details are in, in the status of Nasb and possession is in the status of Jar, right? We understood this. We, we rem will remember it, inshallah. But how to tell the status, how to recognize it? That's important now. So uh, number one, step number one, Look for ending combinations first. How this word is ending? The word which you're trying, to, which are, you are trying to understand, the status of this word is it in halat -e raf or nasb or jar? Is it in the status of raf, nasb or jar? If you want to understand, if you want to recognize, what you should go, what you should go for, go for the last combination, ending combination, ending, uh, look here in the last haraka, the last movement, okay? Harakat, yani this kasra, vamma, fatha are called harakats. In English, we say movements, right? So look at this movement. Um, refer to the Muslim chart. In the next, I'll show you the Muslim chart. Step two, 
look for the sound, right? So first of all, you look at the last uh, um, uh, combination. What is this last? And then look at its sound, okay? Look for the ending sound. Is it U or Un? A uh, or An? E or In? Why there are two? We know the Tanween sounds with In, Un, An, right? Then we a double haraka, single haraka will make only u sound. A single gamma will make u sound. If it is double, it will be un sound, right? Similarly, single fatha will make a sound, a, right? But double gamma will make an sound. Similarly, single kasira will make e sound, and double kasira will make in sound. So you have to see what is the sound. Un, u, a, e, or in, in, e, right? What is the sound you have to look for? Now let's see. Uh, the first, you will look at the last harika and then you will look at the sound, what it sounds like. So Muslim chart is very easy. I mean, the word Muslim is put in different, uh, you know, a status and in different um numbers okay for example muslim like one male muslim the one one muslim means one it's for masculine as you can see so normally uh, muslim in english muslim uh, the arabic is muslimun okay so this dhamma is by default just remember note it down somewhere uh, that uh, this uh, dhamma status or status of rafa Sound of Dhamma, status of Rafa is by default status. Yani if I speak just a random word without a sentence, I will speak it in the status of Rafa always. Okay. For example, if I ask you what is the what is the Arabic for book? So you will say kitabun. Okay. What is the status of what is the Arabic for uh, house? You will say baitun. You will never say baitan or baitin, right? So it's by default haraka. This dhamma is by default haraka always, okay? So if it is a masculine and if it is singular, okay? If it is singular, as you see the Arabic term is also written mufrad and then mufanna, a pair, and then jama plural, okay? So for one, it's mufrad, it's singular. For pair, for two, it's uh, either called dual or pair, uh, muthanna in Arabic. And jam means uh, three and plus, okay? Three or plus. So muslimun is singular. Muslimani, right? How to make it dual? Muslim, and this is a unique thing in Arabic. In other languages, there is no concept of two separately. Okay, for example, book, and then it's books. There is no word to mention two books differently. I hope it's clear, right? We say either book, uh, singular, and then we say plural, books. There is no word in English to, to mention two books. But in Arabic, this is additional thing. Muslimun means one Muslim boy. Muslimani means two Muslim boys. Uh, Muslimuna means three or more Muslim boys. Okay. So you look at um, uh, the last sound here, last combination. That's Muslimun. So if it is Dhamma, it shows its status of Rafa. And for pair, if it is Ani sound, it means this is the status of Rafa. If it is una, muslimuna, right? Look at the sound, una sound, right? Here also, this, this mu, muslimun's double tanween, we just remove it, we keep it single, and then we add vow noon to make it plural. Here also, alif noon is added to make it plural, uh, to make it pair, dual, right? So look at this, the, the additions are written in red color to make it clear. So muslimani means two, Muslim boys, Muslimuna means all, all three plus Muslim boys. Uh, and look at the last sounds and harakat. So this all is in halat rafa, status of rafa. Halat is the status, right? 
Nasb is with Fatha. Musliman. Okay. And uh, for, for, for masculine, always, if it is in a uh, status of uh, nasub, there will, be the, there will be an alif extra. Okay? So there is no alif after meme here, but, and there is no alif after meme here also, when it is kasra. When it is dhamma and kasra, there is no alif added. Just remember this rule in writing. Okay? It comes in writing. But when it is added a fatha, fatha, double fatha, alif always is there, musliman. Because if we, uh, uh, this alif just is, come, uh, it doesn't make any difference in the meaning, but it comes with fatha, fatha thing. Musliman will be halate nasab, the nasab status. Then what is the pair for uh, nasab status? It is muslimaini instead of mani, ani, right? It is aini, muslimaini. So look at this uh, combination, okay? So <clears throat> uh, for pair, it is muslimaini. And for plural also, it is uh, muslimina. Now look at uh, muslimina, uh, maini and mina. Muslimina, mu'minina, kafirina. Walimina, Swalihina, right? You must have read so many words like this in Arabic, in Quran. Uh, so, Ina sound shows plural. It's a plural male, right? Masculine, plural. And Halate Nasab status is Nas. Now, Aini will be very few. Now, this as its <clears throat> pair or dual is unique, Musanna is unique in Arabic grammar it is used very less in quran and in normal also in quran it is very less because mostly either allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about one person or talking about all it's very rare when two people are mentioned two people are mentioned for example like musa and khazar story is mentioning there it will come like or anything like that any story where two people are mentioned uh, there this dual uh, words you will see Okay, Ibrahim and Ismail story where Ibrahim and Ismail were uh, building Kaaba, right? So that story, they, they, then they are using Muslimaini luck, right? Rabbana Jalna Muslimaini luck. Allah make both of us uh, obedient to you. So Muslimaini, there you will see. Mostly, mostly, you will see Muslimina, plural status, plural a number, and the status. Uh, uh, will be uh, uh, jar, uh, nasib if it is ina sound. Acha in jar also, if you see um, here, to very clearly we can understand if it is double fatha or single fatha, it is nasib. But if it is a double kasra or single kasra, then this is uh, jar status of jar. Okay, but uh, interestingly, this is exactly same. Muslimaini, Muslimina. So you need not to, you know, remember so much. Uh, Rafa is totally different, but Nasab and Jar in the uh, pair and plural are exactly same. And you need not to worry then how will you recognize is it Nasab status or is it Jar status if you find somewhere Muslimaini or if you find somewhere Muslimina. How will you understand is it Nasab or Jar, right? That's very easy. Inshallah, as we'll start practicing, I'll tell you uh, how you can differentiate. Okay, inshallah. So that was for famine, uh, masculine. Okay, now let's move to feminine. Okay, how to recognize the feminine nouns, feminine asma, uh, uh, the status. So Muslimun was uh, singular. Okay. And Muslimatun, like this, this the ta, a small ta is added uh, to show that it's a female noun, right? Muslimun, uh, Muslimun means uh, a, a male boy, Muslim boy, right? And Muslimatun means a female Muslim, a girl Muslim. Okay, so this ta is added, Muslimatun, like Mu'minun, male uh, uh, believer. And mu'minatun, female believer. 
kafirun uh, female a uh, male disbeliever kafiratun uh, female disbeliever right so muslimatun so that's muslim chart we will uh, refer it a lot okay we will remember because uh, it's a it's a scale for us that we will judge all other words on this scale okay so muslimatun uh, this ta in the ending shows it's a female remember one thing and the second again we'll go for the if it is gumma it's the status of rafa okay now as it is ending at ta so it is muslimatani remember if uh, for male there was no ta so it was just simply alif noon but now here as this is ending in ta so after ta this alif noon is added here also for male it is alif noon added and here also if it is alif noon added for female also for feminine also it's alif noon added but after ta so it sounds like muslima tani right for pair and for jama uh, this we call it like for for you people easy to understand that just this small ta expand it because there are now more females so enlarge it expand this ta into big ta right and before put one alif muslimatun right so if you uh, if you just by mistake read this muslimatun like you know meme fatha just you prolong it little more one more count it becomes plural that's a big mistake that's why it's important to read with you know proper uh, uh, qawaid so muslimatun ma is short vowel here muslima short sound with fatha only but fatha and then alif makes it a longer uh, uh, sound muslimatun right so um, again <clears throat> this dhamma you can see right so dhamma is a sign of status of rafa in the end and for dual it is ani sound muslimatun muslimatani muslimatun singular pair and plural now for nas it's clear for nas for singular actually it's very clear either it's male or female it's very clear fatha kasra fatha kasra right rafa nasab jars signs so nas muslimatan and there is no alif added remember i told you when for the masculine noun when uh, there is double uh, fatha then an alif is additionally added an alif is added but for female there is no alif added only for male it is added so muslimatan uh, is the status of nasab for singular muslimataini again aini sound is there right Musli there was only meme in the end so we say muslimaini but here ta is also there so we'll say muslimataini right the, the 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 structure is same actually ani and aini right so if it is a female it will be muslimataini uh, it is if it is a male, it is Musli Maini only. So here ta is added for female, Muslima Taini, right? Uh, so this is for pair and Muslima Tin. Easy, very easy. For female, it's easy that Muslima Tun and Muslima Tin. Now for Jar, uh, Muslima Tin with Kasra, easy to understand, to remember. And Muslima Taini, as I said, it's the same for male also. Nasab and jar status are same for pair and uh, uh, plural, right? Pair and plural, nasab and jar are exactly same. Here also, nasab and jar, pair and plural are exactly same. Muslimatin, muslimataini, muslimatin. Okay. How it is going so far? Yes, please give me a, a thumbs up if it is going fine. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay. Um, uh, one more concept I'll give you. And then we'll end, okay, inshallah. Um, as we were, in, that's very easy concept. 
the status um, of SM light versus heavy. Okay, because in the uh, in the next classes we'll use this term. Miss, I don't understand. Goma status. Uh, Ibrahim, you can mute your mic. Uh, unmute your mic. I'm sorry. Unmute your mic and you please ask me what you didn't understand. Miss, you are saying for the gamma status. Gamma, gamma, dod, gamma. Yes. Yeah. What? What is the question? Miss, I just don't understand the concept. Uh, for Rafa. Ibrahim? Yes, miss. Stay on mic. Ibrahim, stay on mic. Okay, miss. Okay. Yani, uh, if it is gamma in the end, the status will be rafa. Okay? And it will show that this person is doing something. It's a doer. Why we need to understand the status in a sentence? Okay? Uh, so that we can make out, okay, who is a doer or who is, what is the extra detail, right? And what is the action? That's why we are trying to recognize different words. So if there is a vamma, this, uh, right, vamma or vamma dain, right? So it will be the status of rafa. Okay? Jazakallah, miss. Understood, Ibrahim? Well, yes, yeah. miss. Okay. So if it is dhamma, that is singular. Uh, but if it is a pair, it will not be dhamma. It will be ani sound. Remember in the first uh, slide here, I said there are two steps to recognize the status, how to tell the status. Step one is look at the last movement, look at the ending combination, and then look at the sound, ending sound. So if it is un or u sound, it will be rafa status. If it is an or a sound, it will be nasab status. If it is e or in sound, it will be jar status. Then we, I, I showed you uh, through this chart for male and female separately. Now I'm just telling you light versus heavy. Uh, as we said that it is, if it is u or un sound, right? E or in sound, a uh or un sound. So th this is uh, making it either heavy or light, okay? So by default, remember, as I said, if I ask you, what is the Arabic word for book? You will say kitabun. You must have heard baitun, kitabun, jannatun, right? So we, we pronounce it with a double haraka. Uh, and that is heavy status, okay? And I said, this is by default. Remember, I said, this is by default. So default status of an ism is heavy always, okay? Um, making an ism heavy or light will not change its status. It's just uh, will be used in some other uh, purposes, the heavy status or the light, the heavy form or the light form will be used just for some other reason. Inshallah, when we'll go next, we'll understand, but it will not change its status. If it is Muslimun, heavy, or Muslimu, light. Both will be in the status of uh, uh, Rafa, okay? It will not change the status. If a word has Alif Lam, that's uh, to be noted. If a, if a word has Alif Lam, the question of light or heavy is irrelevant because Alif Lam and uh, the heavy status can never come together. For example, it, it is either uh, kitabun or al-kitabu, okay? If I can write for you, uh, you will be under, better able to understand. Just a minute. Uh, see, for example, I say kitabun, okay? Kitabun. And now tell me this is heavy or light? It is heavy, right? Because double uh, haraka makes it heavy. We call it heavy. Kitabun, right? Noon sound makes it heavy. Okay. But if I say al 
alif lam if i add then it becomes al kita so then there is no question that it can be al kita bun al kita bun it's never 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 going to happen you will never see al kita bun because either it will be double harika or it will be alif lam okay so it will be al kitabu always al kitabu or kitabun right so that's why when it is alif lam added so the question of light or heavy becomes irrelevant it's it's not possible at all there will be no such case okay now we'll move to the light uh, uh, one uh, four reasons for an ism to be light an ism made light by remove how we make it light what is me what does it mean to uh, a noun is a heavy or light right i told you if it is uh, with a uh, tanween with double haraka it will be heavy so if you remove this so that sound of n is removed actually right and ism is made light by removing extra n sound n sound right noon sound n sound remove the double accent tanween okay so this is uh, this is made heavy uh, light as i told you here al kitabu baitu muhammadu right if you remove tanween the n sound is removed actually and then it becomes acha this is for singular or remove the extra noon at the end of the ism for, let me go back <clears throat> So, for example, uh, um, okay, let, let me go next. Um, yeah, here. This is the light, Muslim chart with light accent, right? So, instead of Muslimun, it is Muslimu. You can see it's single haraka. Instead of Muslimani, it's Muslima. Noon is removed. And instead of Muslimuna, it is only Muslimu. Noon is removed. Similarly, Nasr, Muslima, instead of Musliman. And the point to be noted, if it was double Fatha, then an Alif was added for masculine. Remember, I was telling you again and again that for masculine, if it is double Fatha, an Alif is added. But if it is singular, Muslima, it's, then there is no need of any Alif in the end. Muslima. Musli, what was the pair for Nasab? Muslimaini. So if you want to make it light, you will say Muslimai. Halas. Just and just delete the noon sound. Just delete noon from here. Muslimai. Remember? And then Musli, me. Muslimai and Muslimi. Muslimai means to Muslims. Muslimi means to uh, all, plural. And there are some reasons. There are four reasons. As the previous slide was showing, there are four reasons uh, an ism has to be light. Inshallah, that we'll study later. Okay, that we'll study later. But just remember that there are some reasons why we make an ism light. Okay. So for, for here, we are just understanding how it is light by removing the double haraka or by removing noon from the end makes it light so muslima muslimai muslimi muslimi muslimin instead of muslimin it is muslimi only in noon sound is removed and muslimai muslimi similarly for feminine exact same thing uh muslimatun instead of muslimatun light will be muslimatu right and muslimatani remember noon is removed here muslimata and as there is no uh, noon, so just uh, tun, muslimatun. Instead of muslimatun, we say muslimatu. So that double haraka or noon is removed. So here also it was double haraka. So it is removed into single. It is now changed into single. Muslimatan, instead of tan, it is muslimata, muslimatai, muslimatai ni, noon is removed, and muslimati. Muslimatin, Muslimatai, Ni, instead of Tai, Ni, Muslimatai, and Muslimati. These are the light harakats. Okay. Uh, here we end our class today, inshallah.
uh, I hope you have understood. I'll share uh, these notes for you people to refer back and I have recorded also. I'll share the recording as well so that you can revise. Okay. Inshallah, we'll meet in the next class. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samir alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim amin ya rabbal alameen may Allah accept it from us amin and may Allah make it easy for us subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad kama sallayta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima innaka hamidun majid amin ya rabbal alameen